Hey guys, what's up? Glass Actions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And today we're at the TT Junior track in Assen, you know, the big motorcycle track. Because today it is the, uh, well, for us it's the first day of the second round of the Dutch Championship 4 stroke with the ID Engine shifter card. Yeah, we are at a brand new track which I have never been to before. You might know the big track Assen. It was actually a contender for the Dutch Grand Prix, but it lost out to Zandvoort in the end. And uh, well, we arrived right there. We just built up the tent. It's very windy. The tent almost flew away. And there we have uh, Kart Academy and the ID Engines uh, team. So yeah, I actually, I've never driven this track before, so it's going to be a new one. I've watched some onboards though, and uh, yeah, let's go uh, onto the track, let's see what it's like. Well guys, um, this is the track. Uh, as you can see, the reason that it's so windy is because we are literally in the middle of nowhere, as this province is known for. And uh, yeah, this is actually the start-finish straight. Here we have turn one, and uh, you, uh, you can actually see that the curbs are quite similar to the real track, which is Back there, you can maybe see the grandstand. Also, for some reason, we've got a whole lot of police activity here. I don't know why. Anyways, these curbs, uh, yeah, they're basically just the same as the asphalt, but just painted. So these are going to be pretty useless in the wet. So the, the layout of the track itself is actually quite interesting. There you've got the back straight. Then you've got a long double apex right-hander coming all the way down here into another right-hand hairpin, then a little bit of a chicane into a left-hand hairpin. It actually kind of reminds me of Marienburg, which has a similar first sector. Then uh, we get here through this kind of fast she came and I'm back here look at this whole technical bit here we have a little bit of a straight where you get to carry a lot of speed into a uh, turning braking zone here kind of like gank turn one so I think this is going to be a brilliant overtaking spot and then look at this bit it's almost like uh, an American racetrack or an American car track on a parking lot literally the only thing that's separating this bit of asphalt from that is the white line and these uh, plastic uh, walls so the corners are kind of similar to marienburg or something but in terms of the character of the track it's unlike anything i've ever driven before so it's going to be really interesting driving here but we'll get to that tomorrow so guys just had a wonderful shower because actually at this track they've got really cool and clean showers so that's really amazing everyone can use them it's really nice yeah time to go to bed uh built everything up today a nice visit with the acquaintances and uh, yeah uh, feel fully ready to go tomorrow. So yeah, go to catch some sleep now. See you guys tomorrow. Good night. All right, guys. Good morning. Yeah, again, uh, I slept very well in the van. Uh, nice little makeover we had, and uh, we're ready to go now. So again, we are back on the ID shifter, and well, the card hasn't really changed apart from this, of course. Well hello guys, welcome back on board the ID Engine shifter card and welcome aboard TT Junior Track Asse. A small track located next to the big TT uh, track in Asse and it's mainly used for cars and mini bikes so it's really cool that we are allowed to drive our cars here. It's a really technical track but we'll get to that in a minute because first I would like to ask you guys if you are still enjoying these videos so please consider liking and subscribing this video. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers which at which we will do a giveaway. Uh, this will be a lot of fun, I'll provide more details on that a, bit, a little bit later. But now, let's dive into a lap of Asse where we almost lose it already on the first lap. Here we have to start finish straight, going into a double apex right-hander uh, with which you can use a lot of curb on the inside. But we don't really do it here yet because I didn't really know the track. Then into a long flowing right-hand hairpin which uh, flows into a, a small left-hand kink. Which then flows into a, a big left-hand hair uh, or another uh, slow left-hand hairpin. Here we have the uh, back straight, which has a chicane in there. We uh, reach our top speed here, actually, about 122 kilometers an hour. Then into another right hander in which you can take a lot of curve. Then into uh, almost Bahrain turn eight corner, in which you turn and brake at the same time. Going into the Omega corner, which is a long flowing section, which actually turned out could all be done in one gear, but I didn't really know it uh, here yet. Then into a very bumpy right hander, which immediately flows into the uh, uh, triple chicane here in the end. And that is a lap of the TT circuit of Asse. So it's a really technical track. I really liked it actually. Um, and we had to take, uh, we made, we had to make good use of the Friday in order to actually gain some speed. And a little bit later on in the day, you see that we uh, actually do gain a little bit of speed here. Uh, th this section right here is actually really fast. Going into the double uh, right hander here again. Uh, I already noticed that this was actually a, a very good overtaking spot that we had here. And uh, yeah, I was looking forward to uh, racing around this track. I believe this session is almost done now, actually. Uh, going into the pits, I think, this lap. Yeah, there we go. And uh, yeah, a good little track. And let's see what we can do uh, here for the rest of the weekend. 
Nee, ik had hem daar bij de... Oh, die GoPro ding is er ook afgekomen. Alright boys, that was the first two sessions, now time for the lunch break. Yeah, what a strange track. Uh, really unusual, really difficult uh, last sector actually, that's really technical. I like the first sector though, it reminds me kind of of Marienburg, like I said yesterday. And uh, yeah, it's going decently well I think. In the first session we were about two seconds short, but that's to be expected of course, first time at the track. Then after that we were pretty much about on the pace. There's one guy who's like five tenths of the road. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, it's, I think it's going quite well. Uh, one issue though, uh, we have to go on new tires because the other ones are they're, they're finished. But there's no one who has new tires, so yeah, we have to uh, brave it out on the dead set for uh, another session. And maybe after that we can go on new tires. So uh, yeah, let's enjoy our uh, grilled cheese and then uh, go back out there. Alrighty guys, so a little bit later on on the day, this is actually already the last session, we went on new tires to uh, see what kind of lap time we could do, because uh, actually new and old tires made a really big difference. And you can already see that, that we are taking a lot more speed, uh, getting a lot more confident with the track, we were actually also being really smooth on the steering as you can see, well not, not exactly s super smooth, but still smooth enough to be fast and it, you can only be so smooth with this thing, because it's uh, actually a really rough ride, uh, riding the ID engine shifter. It's yeah, it, it, it's not an easy car to drive, let's uh, say that. It's very bouncy if you make a mistake. Um, so smoothness is really, really important. And also you want to be very smooth with the steering. You want to exit the corner in a straight line because if you don't, you will just burn up those rear tires. And that's of course not what you want. And uh, yeah, that's another uh, lap of Asa Complete there. And I think this is a uh, 44.7, which is actually a, a really good lap time for the first uh, day of uh, being there because uh, that's, yeah, that's about the race pace that we had as well. So I think it was going really good actually and uh, I was really enjoying driving here. And guys, um, a few minutes ago I mentioned something about a giveaway when we reached 20k subscribers. That is correct, we will be giving away this hoodie right here. Uh, it's uh, almost like a, a pre pre-merch thing, uh, it's just an experiment that we had, the merch is going to be different, but if you want to win one of these hoodies, uh, comment down below your uh, hoodie size and why you want to win it. And then, uh, yeah, maybe you'll be one of the lucky guys who will win a hoodie. So remember, at 20,000 subscribers, we will give away a hoodie to one of the lucky people in the comments. Alright guys, that's the last session done and we went on new tires and uh, that was about two seconds faster. We're right on the pace now, missing about, well, missing some consistency, like the peak lap time is just as fast as the fastest guy. But we just have to do it every lap now, which we definitely didn't do. Now uh, time to give this thing a proper clean, which it very badly needs. And then, uh, yeah, time to go uh, to our next sleeping day. Alright guys, good morning. We are back for day two. Uh, again, we have some testing sessions today, about five I think. Yeah, I feel like we ended up yesterday on a pretty good note. Pace was okay, just need some more consistency. If I can uh, do the pace that I did yesterday in my peak lap, if I can do it every lap then I'm solid. So yeah, let's see what we can do. Alrighty guys, welcome to day two. Uh, for this day we decided to uh, kind of uh, drive in groups together with the other shifters because uh, most of the guys I was racing with already knew the track because uh, the uh, Aster circuit is a regular appearance on the Dutch four stroke calendar. Here we are behind Sam Carlis, the guy who we lost out to in Kerpen last time and we overtake him and Sam, on uh, the leader of the train, also decided to let us through. So yeah, the speed was actually looking pretty good here. Um, yeah, we were able to overtake people, which is uh, good of course when you're at a new track. So yeah, I was feeling very confident at this point. You can see that, that we get out of the corner very smoothly there, which is really good. Here we are behind uh, uh, Sam again uh, in the next session. And um, yeah, just seeing, following him through, seeing where we are quicker, where we are slower. You can see that, that Sam took a little bit of a tighter line into uh, the hairpin. Uh, here we actually take almost the exact same line. 
In the hairpin you really wanted to uh, kind of make a late apex and get on the power when the card is straight because like I said you really don't want to be on the power when the card is still turning. There you could see that there was a little bit of uh, dirt on the track and some had to avoid that and because of that he got a little bit of a bad exit so we can very easily uh, do the switch back on him or just uh, go up the inside after the corner was over because he uh, really screwed over his own exit there which is of course not ideal. Now going through the chicane again, I actually really enjoyed the chicane. If you nail it, it's a really satisfying chicane. Only the first time I got a little bit wrong, as you guys saw. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, going quite well here. Some uh, got some speed back again, he overtook us. Uh, so let's see if we can just stay behind him, see where he's quick, see where he's not quick. Um, and as you see, we are kind of losing uh, on every exit a little bit. I feel like we couldn't really get the roll out of the corner for some reason. Uh, even though uh, in Kerpen that was actually one of our strong points. Maybe it's a new track, maybe it's a setup, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a little bit something that we had to work on because Sam actually also was a little bit off the pace uh, and we were also a little bit off of him. So uh, to the front we were off by a little bit more, but uh, yeah, still had a lot of practice to go, so uh, no big worries yet. Nice food time. Here, we call this a Fitche Special, or as they say here in their dialect, Patatje Special. Very nice. It's basically just fries uh, with mayonnaise, onions, and uh, yeah, something called curry ketchup. It's basically just ketchup with some spices in there. Very nice. Oh, yeah, guys, one thing I forgot to tell you uh, our neighbor actually has a famous mechanic. Well, famous. If you watch a little bit more than Formula One, or if you're Dutch, then you probably know who she is. Let me show you. Look who we have here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. No, she also has a YouTube channel. Go follow her. It's yes, very easy. That's Nixon on the dance. All right, guys. In the end of the day, it actually started raining unexpectedly. Um, so we decided uh, to not uh, waste that session and to quickly put on a wet setup. And also to uh, put on some uh, old Rotex wet tires that we had lying around. Um, yeah, they're a little bit slower than the ID engine shifter uh, tires, which are the Leconte wet tires. So it's a really good excuse to uh, burn up some old wets that we had lying around. Let's have a look. So even though the session was a little bit useless, uh, it was still a lot of fun and it actually gave me some nice confidence in the wet uh, at this track because I had never driven this track in the wet before of course. So yeah, it was actually not really that useless if you look at it that way. Uh, anyway, a fun, day, uh, to, uh, a fun way to end the day and uh, I think uh, after this we will be ready to go to our uh, sleeping destination. Okay guys, yeah, we just finished the day and um well, just, uh, it's already quarter to ten, but yeah, the day's finished. Um, yeah, we, in the end, I think the pace is quite good, uh, even though we're on all tires. Uh, we're about eight tenths off, and the difference between new and old tires is very big for some reason. And another strange thing, like, uh, the senior and junior classes are on the same tires as us, but for them it doesn't really make a difference, but for us it does. Strange, but uh, yeah, we'll see tomorrow when everyone has new tires. Now time to clean the helmets, and after that, uh, yeah, time to go to bed. Oh boy. Well guys, good morning I should say, but no, it's not a good morning, it's a very bad morning. So I was just packing all of my helmet cleaning stuff and usually I put this bottle of turtle wax, which is uh, car paint polish stuff, which I use to polish my helmet. I always put that inside of my helmet, so I, I take my helmet, I turn it like this, and I put that in there upside down, the same with the visor cleaner, and put the two towels in there, and then I put it in my bag. But you can probably already guess what happened. The cap came off, so, but there is turtle wax all inside my helmet now. I spilled it all over my pants, I spilled it all over Vitska's room, yeah. Good morning, guys. Alright guys, good morning. We have just arrived and it is time for the warm-up, qualifying and then three heats. And after the three heats, the average of those heats will be of course the final day position. So uh, yeah, looking forward to it. 
let's go. Yeah, issues. Um, we only managed one lap in uh, the warm-up and then uh, yeah, it stopped working. So that's not good. Uh, they're checking what the problem is now. So yeah, let's go over there and see what they find. guys welcome to qualifying uh, after our little bit uh, of bad luck that we had in the warm-up uh, I was determined to set a good lap time here I'm kind of uh, running in the tires and waiting for uh, uh, the, the number 342 here who was one of the quickest guys this weekend I wanted to start my qualifying lap behind him um, but there was one thing that it was not really according to plan and that was of course at the rim uh, one of the uh, rear wheels broke in uh, the free practice and with the ID engine shifter category you're only allowed to use one type of rim but um, Cars Academy, the um, you know the factory team of ID engines didn't really have that rim anymore. So we got a slightly different type, uh, but we were also allowed to use that. But the handling of the car completely changed because it was a completely different rim. With uh, it was made from aluminum, but the uh, volume was really different. So we had kind of had a little bit of uh, some bouncing issues, unfortunately, in this qualifying. And I think you can see it already when going on the power that the thing is just. Very bouncy here, it was okay, but especially in this part, the thing was just bouncing a lot. And why that happened, I don't know. Uh, just a different rim makes the tire react different to uh, the tarmac, and that's definitely what was happening here. And that meant that, um, yeah, we were uh, quite a bit of the pace. We actually were slower than what we were on Friday, on the first day there. So there was definitely something wrong. And just take a look here how much it bounces when we go slow speed. Oof, that's not nice. Yeah, we uh, set a 44.8, which is. Uh, almost more than a tenth slower than what we did on our first day so def something was definitely not right uh, i also didn't really feel confident anymore after uh, our little uh, bad luck there in the warm-up but yeah strange and uh, let's hope it goes better all right that was uh, not the best uh, we had some strange issues there the cart was you know bouncing a lot as you saw on the uh, footage and also uh, yeah, the, the, the temperature of the, the water, when it, like when I'm out on track it stays okay, but then once I come in and I turn off the engine, it goes up to like 100 degrees, so that's not good. So I think I'm going to get a different engine now, I'm not sure. Let's uh, see. Alrighty boys, cart's all fixed up, should work now. Let's go for heat one. Let's see what we can do. Alrighty guys, welcome to the first of three heats of the day. Like in Kerpen, we get three heats and whoever gets the most points in those heats wins for the day. So we roll onto the tram lines here, cutting the chicane for the formation lap. Five red lights and away we go. You can see that we didn't really get the best getaways. That was because I was a little bit sleeping there. I uh, didn't really notice it when the lights went out. So the others got a little bit of a better getaway. Here we tried to have a look up the inside, but we we're just a little bit too far away. I didn't really have the confidence to go up the inside here. Then going into the left hairpin, here we also have a little look up the inside, but we're just a little bit too far away. And the 339 just turns in and he kind of uh, bluffs us off there. He, we couldn't really go for the move there because he just turned in. And if we would have kept our nose in there, that would have been one almighty crash. So uh, yeah, maybe smart that we didn't do that. So it's still P7 for now, uh, which is not the best, considering that we were fighting for the lead last race. Um, so yeah, maybe it was just a case of getting our head down, focusing, trying to get some more speed. But remember, we are still ru running those different rims, which uh, didn't really help us in qualifying. So let's see if it goes a little bit better here as we now complete the first lap uh, going into the double right hander again. It's actually a really cool corner as well. You take a lot of speed in there. There's a little bit of banking. Uh, but here, maybe you already saw it. Uh, we have a coach slow because there was one huge ass pileup uh, behind us. Um, and for some reason, the leader of the field decided to uh, activate snail mode and drive extremely, extremely slowly, which was uh, strange to say the least, because usually at a code slow, you, of course you slow down, but you don't go to this pace. Um, and it's actually really smart if you're in the lead, um, because everyone gets cold tires because of that. And if you are quick on cold tires, which the leader definitely was, uh, you'll only get an advantage because actually at the Dutch four-stroke series you are not allowed to warm up the tires during the code slow or 
in a formation lab which in my opinion is a little bit of a bs rule uh, here we still kind of do it uh, which we got lucky that we weren't caught with as some other people do it as well um but officially i think it wasn't allowed uh like i said yeah i don't agree with that rule at all but um yeah i am not a rule maker so we have to respect the rule even though we don't do it here which is uh, a bit of a bad example but anyways we're still on lap two um, waiting for the uh, five red lights to go out again which I think it took really long it took like five six minutes and the race is only ten minutes long so it is a little bit of a wasted time in my opinion because the crash was actually uh, cleared up quite quickly yeah here we are lap five now um, the uh, five red lights are about to go out code slow is going to end and the leader determines the placement point and you can see that in front of us the guys are actually a little bit sleeping leaving quite a large gap to uh, the cards in front as we now get to the final chicane the leader decides to go for it now so uh, boom there we go we get, we're off again and the 339 was actually a little bit sleepy and uh, he was kind of leaving a big gap but that doesn't really matter anyways because in this race for some reason we did not have the pace i just couldn't keep up with all of the guys in front of me there was a really big gap between uh, the first three cards then like the rest of the top 10 and then me for some reason i couldn't keep up at all and as you can see here already on this first lap they're pulling away um, and yeah it also just didn't feel quite well also in this bit here uh, you would say that it's not really an overtaking spot but still going into this left hander someone just launches it up the inside and boom we lost another position so that's not good um, yeah we are struggling a lot and uh, that was the race actually everyone pulled away including the guy ahead of us and uh, yeah yikes not the best race no confidence uh, yeah of course we're still rocking the wrong rims which is not ideal and uh, yeah just too slow not really nice i really can't say more about it than that unfortunately all right that was uh, not the best no uh yeah just didn't feel quite all right uh just didn't really have the confidence in the car the back end was sliding a little bit yeah wasn't driving at my best so yeah that wasn't uh, good missing a uh, quite a lot of pace actually so we've changed nothing on the cards and uh, let's see if it goes better in the second race all right guys welcome to the second race of the day this is of course heat two we got a lot more laps because we didn't get a code slow in this one spoiler alert now starting in p8 so a little bit worse than what we did last time i couldn't see the lights here but it's five red lights and away we go uh, we get a little bit of a better start this time but unfortunately we are blocked and we have the outside which makes us lose two positions at the start which is not ideal which we, means that we are now actually down to p10 which is uh, not really a good position when there is only 5 15 cars so we decide to take a place back here we are in the corner but then someone gets caught on our rear bumper and we get sent onto the uh, grass there on the outside which makes the entire top line just pull away and there was another almighty pileup behind us uh, luckily anyone everyone got away with that um, or no i think we had some people dnf or yeah I, I'm, I'm not too sure but anyways um yeah we lost out big time to that and uh because we were a little bit too slow and uh, yeah, I just couldn't give up with the rest of the field. Um, that unfortunately was our race. Uh, well, we had one person who broke down there, so that's one position we gained. Uh, but yeah, after that, uh, two more people broke down. Um, so we gained two more places because of that. And that was a race. So yeah, P7, but yeah, actually we were in P9, but two people had mechanical problems and then yeah, we got lucky. We got two positions out of that. This time, however, you see that we were a little bit more on the pace. Now we're only missing five and a half tenths instead of like almost a second. But still, we are definitely too slow and I didn't really know why that was happening. So welcome to the third and final race of the day. You can see that the sun is starting to set now a little bit. So really nice view actually. Uh, in P7, rolling onto the tram line, shifting down one gear, five red lights, building up a little bit of speed, five red lights and away we go. We get a little bit of a better start this time. We actually keep up with the front pack now. Um, seeing if we can go up the inside of the 314 here because he is on the outside yes we can we take p6 for now but he is still on the outside we completely squeeze him out to the outside there and boom that's p6 for us uh, defending into the happen so he doesn't immediately re-overtake us which is of course a common thing in karting you want to keep attacking because otherwise you will be the person who gets attacked and the higher you go on the uh, level ladder uh, the worse it gets and of course because we have a little bit of a smaller field and um, the four stroke level isn't really up to the like the BNL or something uh, we could be a little bit more cautious and not be as aggressive and also for some reason with the ID shifter because it's so heavy it's also racing makes it a little bit more difficult uh, but that's all of the part of the challenge of course and I like a challenge so uh, that is not a problem for me 
Um, but yeah, we are in P6 now going into lap 9. You can see that we are just way too slow again. We couldn't keep up at all. Uh, and actually we have someone going for the move on P7, uh, on, on us there on P4, P7. Uh, well, no, for P6, what am I saying? Uh, we are now back into P7. And uh, yeah, we just uh, couldn't keep up with him. You can see that there on every corner we just lose a little bit here on the straight. We also lose a little bit. And yeah, I just couldn't really get it out of the corners properly. I didn't know what it was. As you saw that the 314 actually went sideways on the exit but, and he still pulled away. So maybe I wasn't driving the correct way. Maybe I shouldn't be using the KZ lines like exiting straight. Maybe I should be a little bit more rounded. But yeah, it's just... I didn't really know what was going on. Uh, yeah, finished race there, another 16 laps done in P7, uh, which gives us a 7th, a 7th and an 8th place, which puts us in P7 overall for the day, which is not really the best. Um, yeah, we just couldn't get the car to work this time. Don't know what it was. Uh, maybe I was driving it wrong. Maybe the setup was wrong. I don't know. It just didn't work. Um, yeah, not really the best, considering that we were fighting for the win last time out. But yeah, not really nice. All right, guys, that was our second weekend of the ID Engine Shifter Championship, and it didn't really go so well. And uh, I have more bad news, unfortunately, because uh, we have decided to no longer race in the ID Engine Shifter Championship. And also, we decided to drop some of the road tax races for this year, and that is because it was just getting too much for me. I couldn't keep up with it anymore. I'm a full-time student. Uh, I'm making these vlogs, which takes a hell of a lot of time. And I'm doing karting. I'm going to the gym. I now have a girlfriend as well, so... Yeah, I felt like it was the correct decision to take a step back and uh, because our main focus is Rotex, I decided that the ID engines uh, was the correct thing to let go. Because also in terms of Tillotson, at the moment of recording this, I have done all the Tillotson races of this year. Well, soon I will actually also be uploading uh, some of the unedited races of this year. I will be uploading those on the second channel, so definitely go subscribe to the second channel as well. It's on screen right now. And there you will find some uh, unedited races which you can watch. Anyways guys, with that also comes the end of this video. Now if you enjoyed that then I would appreciate it enormously if you would hit those like and subscribe buttons. You know you really help me when you do that. Also don't forget to enter this giveaway. Uh, yeah, I just like giving away stuff to you guys. And uh, also a big shout out to my dad for making these hoodies. Uh, it's a little bit of a precursor to the merch that's coming in the summer. Um, so yeah, expect the merch to be different from the hoodie that there is now. So this is a real limited edition one. So go enter it. Go enter the giveaway. Do it. Done there. So the last race we had was in the Dutch Rotex Max Challenge. In which we actually did the last to first challenge. Because we had a DNF in the qualifying. So definitely go check it out. It's on screen right here. This video however is done. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.